Okay, so for tonight's call, what I'd love to do, for those of you who are at the event today, and then we'll take some questions and things like that. Um, first and foremost, congratulations to the entire European market. I think today was the largest ever event in the, in, in the country of Belgium since we opened. I think that there was over 140 people in attendance. That's a massive, massive turnout, 148. So we'll just round up and call it 150. Uh, it's really so impressive, you know, to think that all of us started with, you know, just a couple of people here and there um, in small groups. And now that's what it's becoming is, is really special. And to have the fact that you guys had people fly in, I believe, from other from other countries uh, to come to the event is, is really special. So what I, I would love to hear from a, from a couple of you that are that are willing to share that were at the event, maybe one or two big takeaways, something that you learned that you could kind of pass forward to the people that are on tonight that weren't able to come or people that are watching the recording. So if you want, you can just kind of come off mute. I see Caroline's kind of bobbing her head. So maybe you want to start? Yes, of course. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Jack. Uh, Zach. Uh, it was a really a great uh, event uh, today, uh, full of energy. And uh, my biggest uh, takeaway of today is talk about our compensation plan. Talk about our compensation plan. Talk about the compensation yes. plan. And that's a, that's a really important one. And thank you for sharing that, Caroline. That's a really, really important one. Um, you know, I know a lot of people who, I'll put it this way, I'll, I'll put it a different way. If you don't talk about the business, you'll never have a business. If you don't talk about the business, you'll never have a business. Now you'll have you'll have a way of earning an income. Let's be very clear, but you'll have a job. You'll have a job, and there's nothing wrong with having a job, but you'll have a job that always is going to require you to trade a lot of your time to make money, right? Because if you're not constantly selling products and acquiring new customers, which you also always want to be doing, and you're not creating an environment where you have multiple distribution channels, then essentially all you're doing is limiting yourself from one avenue of income. And there's a very famous quote that some people say it was John Paul Getty that says it. We don't really know who originally said it, but the quote goes like this, which is, I'd rather earn 1% from the efforts of 100 people than 100% from the efforts of just one person. I'd rather earn 1% from the efforts of 100 people rather than earn 100% from the efforts of one person, that one person just being me. And so one of the things that happens inside of our business is people get enthusiastic about sharing products, they get enthusiastic about acquiring customers, as well as you should, because we have amazing products. And that's a really thing, that's something you know we can be really proud about here at, at our company is we can, we can hold our hand up knowing that we're selling high quality products and that we don't really have to just focus on building a team because the product isn't, you know, that great and that it can't sell itself in a lot of ways, which it can't, um, but it takes effort, of course. But when you think about the idea of if I invented this water bottle, you know, silly example, but if I, you know, made this water bottle and maybe this water bottle has some sort of a special filter on it. And I think to myself, okay, well, how do I want to sell the bottle? Well, I could sell it on my website. I could then also think, well, okay, well, I could sell it on my website, but would I also want to sell it on Amazon? Well, yeah, because I know that people are going to shop for water bottles on Amazon as well. Now, I automatically know that by selling it on Amazon, I'm going to make a smaller percentage than if I were just to sell it direct from my website, right? However, I'm now capturing a customer base from people that otherwise would have never made it to my website. And then I think to myself, okay, well, well, what happened if I got this into a couple of big stores where I know people shop for water balls, bottles? Well, now that's another retail outlet. So the more distribution centers I have the ability to create, the more avenues of income I have the ability to acquire within this singular business model. And so that's why we want to talk about as consistently as possible, as consistently as possible, we want to be able to acquire business partners. Like Michelle is saying, some, some people come and do come from customers. There's absolutely that value proposition. And what Michelle's also referring to though is the ability to share with every single person that comes in that at least there's an opportunity for them to earn some money back on their products or earn a little bit of cash on a monthly basis. And that's something that's important to remember also when it comes to showing the compensation plan and showing you share, they share. One of the big mistakes that we make is, you know, we think that, 
okay, so now Michelle says that she's interested in sharing products. Now she's going to be my next big builder. Well, no, not necessarily and probably not, right? Michelle might really just want to have enough money so that she, you know, can, you know, can pay for her kids, you know, new football trainers in the fall or, or whatever it is when, when, when they have, or to pay for rugby uniforms or whatever it may be. But that doesn't mean she's my next big business partner. That just means she's a happy person to turn around and share, okay? So it's learning how to identify what types of people am I communicating with, but always communicating the message of, hey, this is one of the things that we offer. And so again, one of the big mistakes, and Lynn Hagedorn says it so beautifully, one of the big mistakes that we do is we kind of teach people to how to, how to shop the, 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 the walls, the walls of the marketplace with isogenics and the walls are, oh, these products over here or these products over here. When in reality, what you want to show people is the entire center aisle. This is everything that isogenics can offer you, everything. Now you can pick and choose how you want to participate, but part of my, part of my role and my responsibility is introducing you to all these things that are available to you here. So that's a, that's a great takeaway. Who else, who else would like to share? Or is that Carmen? Go for it. Great. Yes, I al already complimented Ilse on this <laughs> just prior. Um, uh, she was telling with such a posture that she is uh, enrolling 70% of her customers also on the business. And she got asked why or how. And she said, and she made it so effortless, so sound, sounding so effortless, that it only takes them to invite two people to join and it was that was mind-blowing information for me and her posture on that and everything so thanks love that so sometimes that's so powerful sometimes most times all the time we overcomplicate what is actually a very simple process we overcomplicate what's a very simple process. Now, it's not necessarily easy. And you guys know that about me and Eden. We've never sat up here and said, like, this is the easiest thing in the world. And you're going to make thousands of euros or thousands of pounds tomorrow. We've never, we've never taught that. And we never will. It takes effort and it takes consistency. But what's important is to help the mind understand the simplicity, the simplicity with which you can put somebody in a position or put yourself in a position to increase your income over time. Now, I have a question for Ilsa. Ilsa. She used a description that I love. She used a description and she said, you make it sound so effortless. Has it always been effortless? No, I was just telling Tim, oh my God, we get so many no's in the last two weeks. That's, I think it's, yeah. And we didn't have that much no's in a whole business year, but <laughs> I was saying, but our intention is to, help the team and to reset and to focus on the team and to get them recognition and to set their goals happening. So I know it, it's another focus we are doing. So we putting the focus on the team and then, then I know that their own enrollments are a little bit lower than our standards and all, um, yeah, uh, Antala. Like the normal focus we have so the standards that we put for ourselves um, to our romance but yeah then whatever you focus on yeah. grows so it's, it's just <laughs> another priority we, we set the intention to to really focus on the team this reset so that's what happens so that's a logic trajectory that we have right now in the business mm -hmm. so it's a good one but like the voice in our in our head is like okay we uh didn't lower but we didn't upgrade our prospecting so that's a logic thing so because, it's normal yeah, it's more um we are putting more time now in the team because we want to help them reach their goals too and then maybe the prospecting is a little bit lower um but it's not always that effortless and easy but just as they told ali they asked us today what's uh, one tip you can give and i told everyone just don't give up and just keep going um whatever happens to you it happens for you and not to you i love that so a couple of really powerful lessons in what in what ilsa and tim just shared um the the first one that i heard that i think is really 
important to keep in mind is the mind games that our, that our ego plays with us, okay? Because some of you are sitting here listening to Ilsa and Tim going, oh, well, we didn't hit our, our normal numbers, right? And we're sitting here saying, well, I would love for your bad week to be my, your bad week would be my best week, okay? So notice the tricks that our minds play on us, right? So they've set a certain standard for themselves and that's totally fine. And notice though, the way that your mind is interacting with their standard. Notice if you're telling yourself something like along the lines of like, oh my God, I couldn't even do half of that. Or I wish to have that bad of a week or anything along those lines. And notice the story that you tell yourself in comparison to other people, but also pay attention from a place of compassion that even though it might not be rational what they're sharing in terms of, you know, it not being where they think it should be, it's still the reality that the ego plays on us. So no matter how successful you become, no matter how many books you've read, no matter how many seminars you've attended, no matter even if you're the person that's taught over 20,000 people in a single audience, your mind is always going to play tricks on you. So pay attention to those mind tricks because they're never real. Now, the other thing that they shared, and this is not a, this is not a business principle that they shared that just happened to come in the form of business. This is a life principle. And the life principle is this, is that when you feel stuck, the greatest way to move yourself out of feeling stuck is by going and focusing on serving other people. I'll say that again. When you feel stuck, one of the greatest ways to get unstuck is by going and being of service to other people. It's one of the best ways to get out of a rut. And the simplest way to get out of a rut by going on and, and, and serving other people is every single one of you lives in a place where I guarantee that you could walk outside within 30 or 40 meters and you'll encounter someone who maybe doesn't have a roof to sleep, have a roof over their head to sleep, to sleep under tonight, who maybe doesn't have warm clothes as the winter starts to set in and you can maybe help give them a blanket, who maybe could use a meal because they don't have the money. So the ability to give when we don't feel like we're in the best place is an incredibly powerful way to open ourselves back up to receiving. And then the third thing, and this is a business principle, and this is something that even I've always focused on and always taught, and the people that have been around a, a long time now will, will, will know that this is true, is when you are able, and this goes for your, for your customers as well as your partners, when you are able and willing to make other people's goals more important than your own, you will achieve all of your goals and then some. And one of the areas and one of the ways in which I watch people get stuck is that it's all about them all of the time. Their recognition, their shout out posts, their number of enrollments, their leader in action points, rah, 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 rah. And if that's not going well for them, they complain, they criticize, they blame, they judge, they say they're going to quit, blah, 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 blah. But the people that are most effective, if you watch, it's always their teams that are constantly moving up because they're focused on other people winning. So help other people win and you will win. That's why there's a very famous quote by a guy named Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar is one of the original kind of motivational speakers, if you will, back in the day. And he said, if you help enough people get what they want, in time, you'll get what you want. It's just very, it's, it's a, it's, my, and my, look, I'm an example of this. I was a very selfish person for a very long time. Very selfish. I didn't care. I didn't care about anything, about anything other than looking good, making money, being perceived as successful, being, you know, hoping that, you know, women found me attractive, having a good body, blah, 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 ego, 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 ego. And where did it land me? Broke, miserable, unhappy, unsuccessful, unfulfilled, resentful, angry, and last but not least, the really fun one, suicidal. And then what came to realize was, wait a minute, this way of living is not working. I've read all of these, I'm reading all of these books. I've attended all of these seminars. And what do they keep telling me? Go focus on helping other people. Go focus on serving other people. And that was a huge revelation to me. What do you mean? And it was this grand aha moment. And I hate to break this to all of you as well, that believe it or not, as shocking as it might come across, you are not the center of the universe and neither am I. 
It's weird. I know it's weird. You know, I know you think that Galileo got it wrong. I know you're like, nope, Galileo, Copernicus, they all had it wrong. I am the center of the universe. And only what I think about matters and only my results matter and only my goals matter and only my existence matters. And yeah, no, with all due respect to you and my adorable, lovingly amazing egos, it just turns out that that's a lie. It turns out that that's a lie. And we have more than enough evidence to support it. So great share. Who else would like to share from today? And if anyone, if, if nobody wants to, look, now there are some of you, I'm going to call some of you out because some of you were at that event and some of you are students. Mikey. Yes, okay. Okay, probably the person that needed the event the most because he has the most to learn. Go on, please. Thank you. I just started in this business. Can somebody enroll me, please? I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you have what it takes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, first of all, I want to, yeah, massive gratitude to all the people who were there. The people who were not there, the next event, you're more than welcome. Uh, it will be even bigger and, and better. Um, for sure, we had a massive lineup regards to speakers. Again, all respect to the speakers, but uh, Zach, it was a, a full English speaking uh, event. So Marcia had the idea, okay, let's do it all in English. So uh, like Kerry Verley, uh, Morgan, Tim and Niels, uh, Tommy, Tom Barnett, they all spoke in English. Um, so th that's that's the next level to to explain right. compensation plan, to explain saloons, that's that's so powerful. Um, I think it's one of, uh, I'm five years in, it was one of the best events I ever had. Uh, amazing setting, the energy was so high. Casey, she's the best, she's like, she has a, uh, she's an amazing soul, she has an amazing heart. Everybody was sitting on, on the top of their seats. Um, yeah, it was an, really an incredible event. So for you guys, I hope she comes to UK, Michelle, for sure. You will come to the Netherlands uh, the next couple of days. It was a massive, massive event. Uh, Marshall did an amazing job to, to put everything in place. Uh, Elena was so happy. So the GM was there, general manager, Elena Bird. Um, yeah, I think a, a lot of people came to me and say, we didn't understand everything from, from the English and maybe from the content. And then, and then I say, it's okay. It's not about the content. The only thing that people say, our belief needle was on a, on a four or a five or a six, and now we're, na we're a nine or a 10. I say that's the only thing you have to pick up from an event like this, that your belief needle goes up. It doesn't matter if you pick pick something, you will pick any any gold nugget, but it's so important when, when you're in an event, your belief needle goes up in the compensation plan, in yourself, in, in your team, and everything. So thank you again, and uh, you're all rock stars. I love you. So powerful, and, and this is this is such an important point for everyone to make for everyone to hear what Mikey just shared. Nobody cares what you say. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what you say. Nobody cares how you explain the compensation plan if you make mistakes sharing the compensation plan. Nobody cares if you know about all of the products or if you can know all the templates inside. Nobody cares. What? gets communicated is something that we can't touch. It's just something that we can feel. That's why, and if you look at, if you look at experts and if you study communication, over 60% of all communication is nonverbal. It's not what comes out of my mouth. It's how it comes out of my mouth. It's the energy. It's the conviction. It's the enthusiasm. It's the belief. And that energy transfers. That energy moves into other people. When I came to, when we first came to, to, to Belgium and the Netherlands, of course, everyone there for the most part speaks perfect English, but there were there meetings, right? Lisana was with me on days where there meetings where, where I was meeting with people that really didn't speak great English. Yes. Did it matter? No. Why? Because I have two eyes and they have two eyes and I have one heart and they have one heart and I have one soul and they have one soul. And as long as I'm willing to open my eyes and open my ears and listen and express through my heart and with my soul, that is a language that is universal. You could go anywhere in the world and a smile is recognized. You could go anywhere in the world and body language is recognized. You could go anywhere in the world and I'm going to know if you're standing like this, it means that you're a little bit closed off. It doesn't matter if I'm in Korea, if I'm in Germany, if I'm in Colombia, if I'm in, it doesn't matter. This means closed off. 
It doesn't matter. So how are you using the expression that's within you that's nothing but energy? Are you using it to your advantage or to your disadvantage? And if you're contracted when you're having these conversations, if you have a little story running that says like, well, I don't know why they'd be listening to me. They should blah, 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 blah. I'm not as good. Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? They're hearing that. You think they're hearing the words that are coming out of your mouth. They're not. They're hearing everything you're not saying with your body language. And I'll use Michelle as an example on this because I know I can speak openly on this type of this thing and most things with Michelle because she's really coachable and it's amazing. When we first started, Michelle would just go off on these rants about God knows what, this, they're not going to do this and they're not going to do that. And you don't understand the UK and British people. Rah, 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 rah. And I'd say, Michelle, it's all energy. Oh, I don't believe that. No, that you, 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 it's, it, no, it's not energy. There's no, it has nothing to do with that. Okay. She goes, it's impossible. How can, how can my team or how can my customers, the prospect, how can they possibly know what I'm saying to you right now, Zach? How can they possibly, it's impossible. They, they, this is BS. I said, okay. I said, okay. That's fine. Or what would happen, Michelle? What might happen if you were open to shifting your energy? What would happen potentially if you were open to changing your mindset and your belief systems? Are you open to finding out what might happen if you just start to make subtle adjustments in your energy? And within 24 hours, oh my God, I, you won't believe it. I sold an ultimate pack. Oh my God, you won't believe it. I just developed a consultant. And I would just write back and say, well, I'm sure it's a coincidence. See, what we have to remember is that this is not a phone. This is just energy that's come together that we identify as a phone. We just call this an arm, but it's energy that's come together that we view and perceive as an arm. And this isn't new age spirituality type stuff, by the way. This is all at, a, this is all at the basic levels of physics. So feel free to interpret it from whichever perspective you want to. But at the end of the day, you are an energetic being in relationship with an infinite number of energetic beings. And there are a variety of different energetic frequencies that exist. You've got to ask yourself the question of which frequency do I want to be on most consistently and most often? When I look at Mikey, and Mikey's just a great example, Mikey is a high energy guy. Even when Mikey's in a bad mood, he's in a good mood. And I've been with him in bad moods. I've been with him in hard times. I've seen him when his heart hurts. But even in those moments, his heart hurts in a way that says, I'm still going to find a way. I'm still going to find a way to love myself. I'm still going to find a way to love the person that I'm angry with right now. I'm still going to find a way to move forward. That's an energetic choice. That's an energetic choice. And so a lot of us, and again, I'm, I'm going to use Mikey. He's a really good example here. Just I'm going to use Mikey, okay? A lot of us look at Mikey and we think, Okay, well, you know, he owns the gym and competition coach and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. All those things are true. But it would be a lie and a mistake to think that behind the scenes on a personal level, Mikey hasn't had his own challenges throughout his entire life, let alone the last five years, because that's life. And guess what? None of us, I don't know a single person in this world, whether they're born in dirt or whether they're born in a five-star hotel with a spoon in their mouth, I don't know a single person in this lifetime who doesn't experience some sort of pain and suffering multiple times throughout their lives because that's just what life is. Life is circumstantial. Life is a combination of a number of events that are completely unpredictable. But how we choose to relate to those experiences from an energy perspective is what's gonna determine, one, our own personal consistency with how we feel about ourselves, and two, how other people relate to us. It doesn't take a whole lot for you, right? I could, we could go to a, a cafe right now. We could go to the pub, right? We go to anywhere in, in Belgium, the Netherlands, the UK, and we could sit down and I would say, show me who's in a bad mood right now. And you'd easily, without, right? You, there, you easily, especially in the UK, right? But, <laughs> but you could easily look, oh God, that could, ooh, I wouldn't want to talk to them right now. But we don't look at ourselves that way, do we? We just think, oh, well, no, you don't, no, I'm, I'm in a crap mood today, so I'm going to be in a crap mood today, and blah, 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 and it doesn't affect anything. It affects everything. And you're allowed to have bad days, just to be clear. It's okay. It's okay to be in bad moods. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to, it's okay to, it's okay to have emotion. Like, there's nothing wrong with feeling. 
But the question is, how long do we want to stay stuck in that feeling? How long do we want to stay stuck in that belief system? How long do we want to stay stuck in that, in the trauma of whatever just occurred? And some things that we experience in our lives, the trauma of those things takes a little bit longer to heal from others. But for the most part, what I'd be willing to bet, the things that you allow to bring you down into a mood, I bet if you were to really take a look at them for the most part, probably not that big of a deal. But then you look at it and say, oh, I wonder why my business isn't growing. I wonder why my customers aren't staying. I wonder why I can't get partners to join me. Just look at your behavior when no one's watching you. Look at your attitude. Look at your energy. It's very simple. It's very simple. You can't see it on other people, although some of you can, some of you can't, some of you will learn to. But every single one of us walks around literally beaming out whatever frequency we're on. We walk around like that. We do. So we either send out a signal that says, stay the F away from me. I want nothing to do with you or life or anything like that. Or we walk around with an energy that says, I'm open, I'm loving, I'm free, I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic, I'm giving, I'm service oriented, I'm moving forward in my life. Or we give off an energy that says, I'm a little bit skeptical, I'm a bit reserved, I'm a little bit conservative, I'm a little bit fearful, I'm a little bit trepidatious, I'm a little bit, I'm in learning mode right now, I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but, I'm, but I believe that there's something possible for me. And guess what? Here's the thing. The more in tune you become with your own energy, the more easy it becomes to read the energy of other people. And that's one of the things I went to work on the hardest myself. So now I, and this is a skill, it's not a gift, it's a skill. I have the ability, I could go into any room in the world, any country, and you line up a hundred people and give me 30 seconds with each person. And I'll give you pretty good understanding of where they're at in their lives. And it drives people crazy. But it's not because I have, that's not a gift. It's a skill. And you know who taught me that skill? My mom. My mom has that ability. Because she said, Zach, just pay attention to people. Just pay attention. And people will tell you everything that you need to know about them without ever speaking a word. Watch. Pay attention. Pay attention to how you treat servers in a restaurant. Pay attention to how the person next to you treats a server in the restaurant. Pay attention to how you treat a flight attendant when you get on a plane. Pay attention. When someone's walking past you, pay attention to yourself. Do you put your eyes down right away to avoid eye contact? Or are you looking to engage? Are you looking for a conversation? It drives Eden nuts because everywhere we go, I get into conversations with people. And not because I'm trying to recruit them into our business. 99% of the people aren't qualified. They're not. But because I genuinely desire to be able to impact just a little bit of change with somebody else's frequency for their benefit and for mine. That's what my dad taught me. My dad, he had moments of success in his life, but on the grand scheme of things, not a very successful person, no matter how you define success. Wonderful human being though, wonderful. And what made my dad so special, and he's still alive, so I should speak to him in present terms. What makes my dad so special is he taught me, he said, Zach, he said, listen, he said, no matter how much money you make or don't make, no matter how good of a day or bad of a day you've had, if you can just help one person every day of your life, smile or laugh, you have done a good deed. Just one. Just one. But in order for me to find one person to help smile or laugh, guess what? Every single person I come across, I'm looking. I'm looking. Every single person, I'm trying to find a way. How might I be able to connect with this person? And I don't mean to connect for hours long conversation. It could be so simple. It could be about their dog. It could be about the shirt that they're wearing. It could be, it could be, the, it could be the, 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 their hairstyle. It could be their tattoos. It could be anything. But most people walk around this world with their heads down. And why? Because they're on a frequency of misery. They're on a frequency of anxiety. They're on a frequency of trauma. They're on a frequency of not feeling worthy or doubting themselves or doubting who they are. They're on a frequency of believing that they're not good enough to hold their head up, a basic premise. That, that's the frequency that they're on. And you, with your own energy, have the ability to help them lift their chin up just a little bit. It's like those videos. And maybe one time you want to try this. You ever see those videos of people, and I, I don't love these videos because I think people do it for, for clicks and likes, but a little video where you go to a, to, a, to a cafe 
and you say, hey, I'll just, I'll take care of the order behind me, whatever they get, just add an extra 10 euros to take care of their coffee. I got it. And the person goes, what, they paid for me? Oh, let me pay for that. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get this one. And then chain reaction. So maybe a little stretch for you. Maybe the next, maybe tomorrow morning. I don't know if you go to a, to a, to a cafe or a coffee shop or whatever it is. If you're in, if you're in, if you're in the Netherlands, you know, if coffee shop different, I get that. So if you go to a cafe, okay, that can get expensive buying everybody else's stuff. Okay. But if you go to a cafe tomorrow, if you have the opportunity, treat somebody. It doesn't have to be expensive. It's a couple, a couple euros, a couple quid. Treat somebody. When you help raise someone's chin up a little bit, help them open their eyes a little bit, help them open their hearts just a little bit. And why are people beat up and why are their heads down? Because so many people carry stories, carry stories of abuse, carry stories of abandonment, carry stories of being, of being, of being um, told that they were never good enough, being told that they would never amount to anything. And you as an individual who has found your way into this remarkable community, who's found your way into a vehicle that can help move you on to a different frequency, you have the ability to really impact change at the most meta micro level because of who you're becoming. And that's a really special thing. And guess what starts to happen? Because you're watching it happen with people on this team. What starts to happen is you walk into that same cafe and people look at you and they go, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing, but there's something about you. You've got this amazing energy. And that's what I'm looking to be around in my life. That's the ability you have to impact change. There are people in, in this European market who I know, because I've seen who you've become and who you're becoming, who when we first met used to say things to me like, I can't believe you're real. I can't believe you're sitting here with me. I can't believe you're having this conversation with me. I can't believe you're taking so much time with me. Because we go around the world believing everything that we were taught to believe at a really young age. But guess what? The moment you become a mature person who can think for themselves and you have an awareness of what your history has been, now you have the ability to change that. And so if you really want to grow an organization, if you really want to grow a business, if you really want to grow a team, but most importantly, if you really want to grow a life that feels good because of who you're becoming, go, go, go just spread. Go. It sounds so ridiculous, I know, but go, go spread some love. Like, it sounds crazy, but go be a nice human being. It takes zero talent to be nice, to be loving, to be thoughtful, to be friendly, to smile. To smile. Imagine how much better you would feel in your own life if you just said, got to smile more, smile more, smile more. We're good at all the, oh, go to the gym, fine. Drink more water, fine. Eat healthy, fine. But a simple, basic thing, smile more often. Smile more often. Like what might happen? What might happen? People are going to look at you, especially again, you know, people are going to look at you. Oh my God, that person must be on drugs. People love drugs. It's fine. They'll want some of them too. Whatever you're on, they'll take it. Because they want that. They want the impact. They want the feeling. They want the feeling. And that's how you incur change in this world. By choosing to get off whatever frequency you've been on and get on a higher frequency. You're going to always stay on that high frequency now. But again, and some of you have seen me train something called above the line, below the line. The more regularly we can be on that higher frequency, the more regularly we're going to experience a more enjoyable life. And again, just coming back to what Ilsa and Tim said, anytime I'm down, how can I serve somebody else? Who can I check in on? So with that, I'm going to let you go because we're a few minutes over. Thanks for staying with me. And again, huge congratulations to the entire European market. And this is really important and loud and clear that I want all of you to hear. Even if you weren't in the room today, you contributed to that event's success. Even if you're watching the recording right now, if you weren't able to make it, you contributed to that event's success. How did you contribute? Because of your energy and what you've contributed to the growing of this company and this organization in the European market. So we'll talk soon. Lots of love. Have a good evening and uh, sleep well. Bye, everybody.